Walking and talking, just minding my own business. Certainly not a threat to any deer in the area. Go away. My blood is not for thee. Hello, y'all. We're here at uh, North Table Mountain. I've been here a ton of times. It's nice because it's very close to where I live, so I can come here a lot and try to get all the best conditions possible. I've never seen it greener here. It's been very rainy, so I'm actually very excited about this. Um, there's a lot of clouds, it's a very hot day, but every time I used to come here, I would wish that I had more reach because you can see Denver really well from up there. And now I have this, so I figured what a better place to go than here. So we have some nice patchy lighting. Uh, hopefully it'll still be going on when I get up there, but I have a very steep and quite arduous hike ahead of me, so I'm gonna get moving before we lose some of this nice cloudy lighting and it just becomes a hot, sweaty mess. kills me every time. It's not long, but it is steep as fuck. But I kind of prefer that because then you just, you get it over with real quick. It's like 15 minutes. If you're a pussy like me, these guys can run up and down it. This is a very popular like mountain bike trail. It's basically just the plains sitting on top of a plateau right before you get to the mountains. So it's like 20 minutes away from Denver, just just west of Denver. Very well-known spot. People come here to bike this all the time. I come here because it's got really cool rock formations. I came here in the early uh, sunrise snowy video I did a few months ago. Yeah, I don't know, I just love this place because it's really easy to get to. It's a short hike, but it's really demanding. So it, uh, it just wrecks you, or me at least. And I kind of like that because, I don't know, the harder I work, the easier it is for me to sleep. I suck ass at sleeping. Now that the hike is over, we can sort of look around. And I swear, this is the greenest I've ever seen it. Especially this late in the year. It's, I mean, it's July now. Usually it's 100 degrees by now. And it is hot today, but uh, all this rain we've been having. It was green like this one other time I came here and it was like early spring, right when the rain started. So. This is a really nice surprise because even with the harsh light, it still looks pretty good out here. Unfortunately, a lot of those clouds are fading away now, so we're not getting the patchy light so much anymore. But uh, I'm gonna head to one of my favorite spots, which is all the way on the south end of, of the mountain over there. So I'm gonna follow this loop around and find a spot to set up and see if we get anything cool happening tonight. If not, we'll just have to get some Jolden Hour shots. One of the reasons I came here today was I want to see how Denver looks from here with this big ass 150 to 500 because I've been wanting to do a super telephoto from up here of Denver because it looks so cool when the when the light is right. And two, I uh, you might have seen the moon photo that I posted to Instagram and threads. Follow me on threads by the way, you know? I've never had a lens long enough to be able to shoot the moon, and now I do. So I've been wanting to find some more moon compositions, and I think if we can line it up properly, one of these full moons over the next couple months, we can hopefully get the moon rising over Denver from miles away with the 500 millimeter, and I just think that would be awesome. So mark my words right now, that is my goal photo to get before the end of the year. We're gonna use photo pills and see what we can get set up over the next couple months. Fun little fact. That is south, down there. Right along here, these ridges, is just east of Red Rocks. Red Rocks is actually nestled right back here. And that little mountain over there is called Mount Glennon. 
And uh, that was one of the very first places I went to try my hand at landscape photography. When I first got my, I think it was my GH5. I don't think I had the G9 yet. And uh, yeah, I just sat perched up on some rocks and it was amazing. And it was one of the most magical photographic experiences of my life. We got, we got a really nice sunset that night and I got a pretty cool photo. But uh, I didn't save that raw file because I'm a dipshit. I just thought, ah, what will I ever need that for? Because I'm dumb. So again, always, always save your raw files if it's a photo you're excited about. Ah. Ah. Oh, it got hot real quick. But I found some shade. This is a tree that, uh, that I sort of camped out at a couple years ago when I first came all the way over to this side. I think that's the only time I've been all the way over on this side. And it's so cool over here, I love it. It's this nice carving canyon that overlooks Denver in the distance. And you got these really interesting isolated pine trees everywhere out here. It's not like a forest, you know, so you actually have the opportunity to sort of use one of them as a main subject. And I remember taking a long exposure photo of this one from a little bit further down. And there's a whole bunch of flowers over here. There's some really nice looking flowers that we could maybe use as a foreground this afternoon. But uh, the main reason I came out here, as I said, was to play around with this lens. I've already shot a photo or two of Denver, but it's just pure white sunlight on Denver right now, so it's just kind of a bummer. This lens is really cool. I was originally looking at the Sigma 100 to 400 because it's like under a thousand dollars, and uh, I think that's the one that Michael Shane Bloom uses. So I was like, you know what? If it's sharp enough for him, it's probably sharp enough for me because he's an amazing landscape photographer. And then I became aware of this 150 to 500, so it's a little longer on the short end, but it's also longer on the long end, which I would prefer because chances of me using 100 millimeters are pretty slim. I have an 85 that I can use for that kind of stuff, but uh, I mean, it's a fat lens for sure. It's definitely the biggest lens I've ever owned. It's nowhere near as big as like the Sony, obviously the G Master Primes and stuff, but those are like thirteen and $14,000. So uh, I don't really even consider those lenses for me, but uh, I think this is perfect. Obviously the uh, benefit to something like this is it's a little bit smaller and it's got a zoom range. I mean, really the only time that you would want a 600 millimeter prime is if you know exactly how far your subject is gonna be at all times, like if you're a sports shooter or something and you need the extra stops of light. And obviously that would be nice, but uh, nowhere near almost the price of my car. The cool thing about this lens is that it has this clutch lock right here. And when I was carrying this up the mountain, that was incredibly handy because normally you would just rely on something like the lock switch, but it's such an aggressive lock when you engage that that you, you cannot zoom it back out. So when I would see something cool, like the light was changing, I would go, you know, to use that and I could just see myself forgetting that every single time and getting super annoyed. So it's nice when I'm walking to just throw the clutch up and as soon as I want to shoot, I just pop it back down and I'm ready to go. This is my first Tamron lens. They look cheap and plasticky when you look at the photos. And I mean, yeah, I guess it's a little more plasticky than like a Sigma, but honestly, it's it feels nice. Like it feels well made. I'm quite pleasantly surprised and it seems to be every bit as sharp as my Sigma lenses. So honestly, this might open up the uh, floodgates to buy some Tamron lenses as well. They're pretty good. So the view from all over this plateau is pretty similar as far as Denver goes. What I wanted to do was to come out here and see when the moon is going to be rising behind Denver on any given full moon that we have coming up. So if we go into the calendar here under moon, we can go to the next full moon, which is gonna be on August 1st. And we can go to AR and see exactly where it's going to rise from, which actually that looks perfect, at least from this vantage point. Chances are I won't shoot from this exact spot because there is a white church looking building that's down there and I would like to line that up so I would go a little further um, that way to line that up a little bit better. But I think that this would just be such a dope shot, zoomed in at 500 millimeter with the moon coming up behind the city down there. Let's look at August 30th. So yeah, that's a little bit further north. So I think if we're gonna do this, we gotta do it August 1st. Let's go take a look at some of this uh, flora and not 
what's what's the difference between flora and fauna? One is a flower and one is a not flower. I don't, uh, I'm not a meteor biologist, so I'm not exactly sure, but all this rain has just produced, again, the greenest I've ever seen this place. And then just a ton of wildflowers all over the place down here. And the cool thing about this tree is that it actually has this trail, which I mean is probably not good because that means that people are walking through this one spot a lot, but at the same time, this trail leads right up to the tree. So if we can get this framed up properly, probably a little further down this way, we can get some nice flowers and then the line, the leading line going right up to the tree, which could be really nice for golden hour. I'm just trying not to step on any of these nice little flower patches here. I really love the way this tree looks all isolated up there. Obviously I'm gonna have to move my tripods and all the stupid bullshit that's up there, probably hide it behind the tree. But I think a nice little patch of flowers just like this, Probably with the uh, 20 mil, or honestly, even this with the 24 mil looks quite nice. And this part, this part of the mountain should get golden hour light a little bit longer than some of the places back over there that are shrouded in uh, shadow a lot earlier on. It's been really nice just on the hike up here having a, having a super telephoto lens because it enables me to just sort of take random photos as I'm walking and it's definitely bigger and heavier and a pain in the ass to carry around but having that insane reach just right at the tips of my fingers is really nice because a lot of times when you're hiking you know you don't have that perfect composition but the ability to eliminate all the distractions from the beautiful scenery you see while you're hiking is really important to be able to do that to get those just little random quick shots on your way somewhere. So that's been really nice to be able to take a bunch of photos before I even get to the location I was planning on going to. All right, so I'm sort of screwing around here with these uh, wildflowers. I don't know what they're called. I think they're called flowers. If you know about Florina, then let me know what they're called because I have no idea, but they're, uh, they're quite beautiful. And there's a literal shit ton of them and a ton of different options for compositions. So I've sort of just got the Sony here set up, the uh, a7 III here set up with this big old batch of them right here. And since there's not much interest going on in the sky, I've actually got it at just under 35 millimeters to sort of eliminate some of that boring blue sky. We'll see, holy shit, there's fucking deer right there. And my big lens is all the way up the hill. Walking and talking, just minding my own business. Certainly not a threat to any deer in the area. I'm actually heading over this way, completely away from any deer. There's no deer over here. And even if there was, I certainly wouldn't be a threat to them, so... I'm just gonna grab my big old lens here and just, uh, gonna hang out and not shoot deer. Deers are kind of pussies, eh? I wonder if moose up there in Canada are fucking pussies too, huh? I don't know. They certainly don't know. They uh, they completely ignored me. I was talking at full volume, like they were probably like 40 feet away from me, and they were just chilling, eating fucking grass. And it wasn't until I decided to go get my camera that they decided to bugger off. But I mean, hopefully they were in focus. But I, I definitely got some decent shots. I think maybe we got some deer photos, gentlemen and gentle women, or whatever. <laughs> off you little bastards the sun is still here it's not your fucking turn yet go away my blood is not for thee i got a whole bunch of shots of the sun slowly kind of crawling its way down these flowers and i think it'll work really well because the tree is lit the area around the tree is lit and then the flowers are lit but everything beneath the flowers falls into shadow so i think it'll make it pop really nicely as always i won't really know until i get home because i'm 
just too stupid to fully understand whether or not my photos are good until I see them on my big beautiful 27 inch monitors. So I think that's about all I'm going to get right now. I'm gonna pack up this camera, keep this one in my hand because I'm gonna still take a few more photos of downtown and just the general landscape as I walk back to the car. And it'll probably be nice to get the f out of here before I get completely chewed alive because as is tradition on this channel, I prepared not at all for the mosquitoes. This time, I prepared mentally though. I knew that it was gonna happen. I just didn't prepare any physical thing to combat it, unfortunately. All right, time to pack up and head back and scout a couple more compositions for downtown come fully moony time. feeling when you're walking down a super steep hill and you finally get to the bottom and it levels out and it's just like uh, like all that pressure is finally taken off your fucking feet I think I like going up hills more than going down hills because it just like rams your toes into the front of your shoes just over and over as I was coming back I came to the conclusion that any time that I go and shoot landscapes or nature of any kind I am 100% always gonna bring this lens because holy shit does it come in handy, man. Just having that reach on you at a moment's notice. You don't have to sneak up on animals as much. If you don't have a super telephoto and you like shooting in nature, just invest in something, just anything that'll get you some reach because it really makes a huge difference. And when there's no clouds like today, it doesn't really matter that much because when you're shooting wide and there's no clouds, you try to work the angles and find foregrounds and stuff that'll help you eliminate as much of the sky as possible. But when you have a telephoto lens, it's not hard to eliminate the sky. You can just find little scenes everywhere. I think I took more photos today than I've taken in several of the last landscape trips that I've done because I have this lens. 100% worth the purchase. I'm gonna go ahead and head home because I'm tired and I'm going to edit these photos. Thank you guys for watching my stupid garbage. To see another time that I made an ass out of myself out in nature, click right here.